Okay, in this part of evolution, we're going to be focusing on how evolution can affect the way a population evolves, a species evolves, uh, usually based on environmental factors, but let's go ahead and look at these different patterns that can arise due to, uh, due to evolution. Okay, the first one we want to look at is divergent evolution. You can have organisms that are very closely related, okay, different species that are very closely related, However, they don't look alike because the environment that they grew up in caused them to physically change, caused certain genes to show up in, uh, in the physical makeup in their phenotype. And that's um, why they don't look the same, even though they are very similarly, similarly related uh, genetically. All right, the way divergent works is you have, a, if you start at the beginning of, of a particular uh, group of organisms. They started out with a common ancestor, but they diverged into unique individual species based on the environments that they're found in. The grizzly versus the panda versus the polar bear is, is a good example of how the bear diverged into different species of bear uh, based on the environments uh, that they were found in. Another theory, uh, or another example of this uh, divergent ev evolution, uh, for example, the fox. Okay, you've got the red fox, you've got the uh, uh, the Arctic fox, and you have the Tibetan fox. Okay, these three foxes, once again, very similar genetically. However, they are going to be considered a different species because of the physical traits that evolved or transpired due to the uh, the uh, the environments they found themselves in. So this is another example uh, of what di of that theory of divergent evolution of what it's representing. Okay, you can also have a type of evolution that shows convergence or convergent evolution is where you have different species. They share the same environment. They might even look similar or have similar structures. However, they're not closely related. Okay. So, for example, let's look at uh, marine animals like uh, the Pacific spotted dolphin, the great white, the um, clownfish. Okay, all of them are marine animals. They even have similar physical characteristics like f tail fins and pelvic fins, dorsal fins. Um, they have the ability to use uh, use water by a means of extracting oxygen to to breathe underwater. However, they are not related. So this is where different species converged, containing similar traits. However, they are specifically different species and are not related whatsoever. Okay. Uh, another example. Uh, avian animals or animals that uh, have the ability to fly all right you have the bald eagle for example a butterfly uh, and a bat so these once again through convergent evolution they were in a similar type of environment so they adapted similar traits but they don't uh, they're not related whatsoever or very um, there's no relation okay bird obviously lays eggs, feathers, butterfly, insect-based, um, larvae, and then bat and mammal. So uh, different species, even though they have similar, they evolve similar traits due to similar environmental factors. Okay, let's uh, look at some more examples. Gradualism. Okay, what gradualism is, is the idea that really is at the fundamental basis of evolution. It's a species change or species formation over a slow, gradual time. Okay, it doesn't, uh, the idea of gradualism is pretty much saying that a species is not going to um, show up with different traits in the next generation. Okay, it's going to be a very slow, gradual process before you see these physical or these adaptations occur in nature. Uh, for example, um, 
looking at the evolution of uh, of the horse, okay, 50 million years ago to 3 million years ago, you can see how how the 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 foot structure, the bone structure of the foot uh, changed. It became more elongated. Uh, it changed from having more finger or toe type bones into it to a more uh, a, a solidified type hoof type bone. Uh, notice the skulls have changed over the years. Gradual change, okay, to where they've elongated. They've gotten bigger. The uh, the front teeth have become more elongated and pronounced. So that's an example of gradualism. Punctuated equilibrium. When you're looking at punctuated equilibrium, think about our peppered moth example. Okay, we looked at peppered moths in the evolution web quest, and you've heard about the peppered moths before. Uh, but when punctuated equilibrium occurs, it doesn't necessarily follow the gradualism um, theory. Okay, what's happening in punctuated equilibrium is there is a species that evolves very quickly or at an irregular rate. Um, usually, it's quicker than usual where particular genes. Uh, take over in a population, uh, and the peppered moth is a good example. Okay, uh, if you remember the story, there is a species of moss, and in that species of moss, they had a, a type of color to their uh, to their coat or to their their exoskeleton. They had darker and lighter colors. Okay, two different gene alleles for or two different alleles for that color type. Pre-industrial revolution, okay. There on on the trees that these particular moss lived on, there was a lot of lichen that was growing, which is lighter in color. Okay, so the lighter colored moss were able to blend in with the lichen in the forest in the northeast area of the U.S. They were able to uh, blend in with that lichen that was growing on the bark. Uh, that that helped them, you know, that gave them the camouflage to help uh, hide them and preserve their species to where they weren't they weren't eaten as often by predators. The lighter colored moss, the moss that were that were born that had the darker gene, they stood out more, and so those were more likely to be eaten by predators. So you had a a larger amount of the lighter colored moss compared to darker colored moss of of this species pre-industrial revolution. But once uh, once industrial revolution hit, factories built, factories pr produced a lot of smog, especially back when they were first built and first uh, the big boom with the industrial revolution was hitting. Um, the smog and the smoke suffocated and killed the lichen on these trees, and so it never it stopped growing. And so what would happen is it would also coat the trees. And so there was no background or camouflage for the lighter colored moss to be able to blend in with because the lichen had died off and there was a darker coating on the trees because of the smog and soot. And so the darker colored moss were able to live and and hide better through, due to the camouflage and the lighter colored moss were eaten and so there was a change and it was an irregular change. It was actually a rapid change in this particular species and the darker colored moss that that particular gene took over those moss were able to reproduce more so that when they reproduce more they produced more of the darker colored moss for that particular species so these are some examples of of uh, patterns of evolution divergent evolution uh, convergent evolution and then your gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium